Many believe that in order to isolate a room, it's enough just to hang some foam panels on the walls. In fact, these panels are for reducing the reverberation in the room, but not for preventing sound leaking from your room. If you would cover everything with these panels, it might reduce a leakage of higher frequencies, since they are shorter, and it might make sense if you play, let's say, the violin. But these panels don't stop lower frequencies from going through. For that, you definitely need dense, heavy and more expensive materials. Here is my solution that is designed in such a way that I can dismantle everything when moving away, returning the room to the nearly initial state when leaving the apartment, if not to count some screw holes in the walls that might be sealed nevertheless. Since I'm living on the last floor of my building, I luckily don't have neighbors above. So fortunately, I could skip a challenging ceiling isolation task. This is a rented apartment and I don't have any idea how long I will stay here, most probably just a few years. So I can't really do this in a proper way because that would mean taking out the floor, opening drywalls and just building everything from scratch. I can't do that. I need to leave this place in this nearly the same uh, state. So uh, the only option I, I can do is to do it wrong, meaning I will just cover everything what we have here with uh, various uh, sound isolation materials. The champion in uh, uh, soundproof materials is a mass loaded vinyl MLV and it's very expensive. That's why I have chosen an alternative option that has similar qualities it's still a very dense material and very thin one but it just costs less and then we put the layer of these heavy panels on top that are going to do the main job in uh, sound isolation because basically it's just a cardboard filled with the special sand so they're really heavy they're 15 millimeters uh, thick but uh, the producer claims that they can reduce the volume uh, up to 32 uh, decibel it's, it's nearly the third of the volume of an opened concert grand piano i have realized that our room doesn't have uh, ideal dimensions that's why between some of those boards I have a pretty significant gaps of like half a centimeter. That's why I filled those uh, gaps with a special uh, acoustic sealant. What I don't like about this whole project is that for every small task you need a special piece of equipment and you kind of buy a thing just to use it once and then most probably you will never use it. So now we will try to build drywalls and for this we need these metal uh, profiles. Uh, there are two types of them. One that is called uh, UW that you place on the floor and another one CW that has those crouched edges that you place vertically. To connect them you need either uh, drywall screws or you can use this fantastic thing that clips them really easily and nicely one to another. The main soundproofing task will be uh, executed by those panels with sand uh, because right there on this wall we have a bedroom of a guy, of a poor guy who is going to listen to our piano music of most probably for the next few years. So uh, we are going to enforce this wall with very hard, very heavy panels. Landman claims that he doesn't use a knife in order to even vegetables. Welcome to the real world.
Another effective solution for which I'm grateful to my fellow pianist friend is an improvisatory piano covering using acoustic foam panels. Yeah, it looks quite ugly. But cons are also great, because it's cheap and very effective. The volume of your piano might be easily reduced at least by 50%. Of course, you won't be able to enjoy a beautiful sound of an opened piano and work on acoustical nuances of the sound, so I use this cover mostly for some technical work, when staying quiet is a priority.